and the best that it ever made was uh, in its current form was 135 torque and 129 horsepower. Give some words of advice maybe to somebody that's looking to buy it, maybe somebody that just bought it, thinking about things to do. Oh, and, and FYI, the rear brake still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what is going on guys? So check it out. You know who this guy is behind me. This is Alex from Arc Tuning and we've done so much stuff together. Matter of fact, a year ago, about a year ago. So right around this time. Okay. He bought a 2020, you remind me. Three. 2023 Three. Harley Davidson Lowrider ST. Yep. Right, okay. You guys, I just got to get it right. <clears throat> anyway, and right now you're just looking at us. This is like an episode of the fishbowl. Really what this is, is going to be Harley Davidson shop talk. <laughs> and we're going to talk about his experiences with this motorcycle. Um, and I'll show you in just a second what he's done to it. And owning your own uh, tuning, you get to do a lot of fun stuff that most people do. Yeah. Like fast forward, he's, you've had four different cams in this bike, two exhausts, many different intakes and manifolds. Yep. Uh, and we were just saying that you even have some injectors you're about to play with. And, yep. and I got a, an, another, another, cam, another cam gear to play with, see what that does by advancing it four degrees. And then uh, also the, the endless amount of tuning you can do with exhaust inserts is crazy on these bikes. So um, it's never ending. And during the slow times in the fall when people don't really want to spend money on stuff, it allows me some time to play around and see what works and what doesn't. Alrighty guys, so here we are. Check this bike out. I mean, we're gonna go over this just a second. And uh, just so you guys know, I think the wind is like 40 miles an hour. Yeah, it's crazy today. Yeah, we were gonna do a ride thing. I got my bike here, I actually rode here, but we were gonna ride, I was gonna ride it, he's gonna ride it, we're gonna vlog, we're gonna mess around. I think we we're rain checking or wind checking that because we have, you know, Florida winds out there. And it's cold. <laughs> It, it, it's a cold wind right now. It, it's it's like 50 degrees out, which isn't bad, but the direction the wind is blowing, cold. 100% agree with him. I even put my heated gear on <laughs> because I had committed on coming. But anyway, guys, like just check out this bike. Just first glance. I'll, I'll drop a, a little clip of what it looked like bone stock. We've all seen them. But yeah, just it just subtle touches. It looks so good. I've ran right next to this guy. It's, it's fast. It's fast. Okay, I'm just gonna throw that out there. All right, I'm gonna. I think I think you've seen the front wheel at about your shoulder height too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. And you guys know I'm six seven. So, <laughs> oh man, wow. I mean, you. I see you got some carbon fiber taste. I, I, there's just uh, there's so much. We got the same foam mount. I just. Listen, there's so much taste is taste, guys. I even heard a rumor you have a different headlight, yeah? <laughs> uh, I, I've, Maybe. I've looked at it, and I'm, I'm also a, a kind of a light nut, so um, I'm not happy with the pattern out of it, so I'm not sure if I'm going to go that route yet. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so here, I'm going to hand you the mic. Guys, I hate giving up the mics, but... I'll give you the mic, and then let's talk about some of the things you've changed. How about some of the things you, uh, from initial, for a, after a year, um, you've had it on the dyno, you've done so many things to it. Some of the things that maybe have your opinions changed in a year, something maybe you thought you liked, you don't, maybe things you thought you didn't like and you do, um, any, anything that you'd like be weary of, make sure, you know, stuff like that. Um, and then your favorite changes, which is, I have an idea of some of them. I have a favorite change. I, th I think I have a favorite change, actually, on your bike, <laughs> if, that, if that counts. All right, so here, here's the mic. Let's see what we do. By so, the way, this is, this is the first, this is not the first, but this is one of the episodes of what we're going to call the fishbowl. <laughs> I love it. All right. 
So it started off, um, I, I mainly wanted to do a bunch of different cam tests because um, one, everybody has their preferential cam. And so I had four that I tested, I had three that I had planned on and one that just happened to get thrown in there because it was sitting on a shelf. And so it was the Comp 230 was the one that was sitting on the shelf, got thrown in. And then I had a Chris Revis Rocket 474, and then an Alpha or Psychorama 485, and then also the Ward 475. And surprisingly, the, the three of the four were very, very close. And initially, I had started out with a different exhaust as well. So um, could, that, could those cams be different with, uh, with a different exhaust? Possibly, but uh, I've gotten pretty good results out of the Bassani Superbike pipe that was originally on this thing when I started tuning it. So, and last fall, this thing lived on the dyno for almost 500 miles. Um, I changed the cams right there on the dyno. It never came off. And literally, I beat the snot out of this thing for 500 miles on the dyno. Um, so currently, it has the Ward 475 in it. It just happened to be the last cam that I swapped into it. Um, and now has a HPI 62 millimeter throttle body with their manifold and then just a big s, &S air cleaner. And uh, the Milwaukee 8s tend to like that open element on the, on the very front of the filter. You can see it gives it kind of a straight shot. Milwaukee 8s love that open face element there. Um, this one. Yep, that one right there. So um, for you Harley guys that watch this stuff on an Indian guy's channel, if you want performance, find an, find an air cleaner with that element that type of element. Um, and then the motor stuff is stuff that most everybody's interested in, but uh, my background in motocross, I really like handling. So I started to focus on suspension at that point. So initially I wasn't sure if I was gonna extend the fork legs at all, so I bought a set of thrash and trees that uh, thrash and supply drop trees that allow me to lower the forks one inch from stock and then also I did their six and a half inch pullback risers, same ones I had on my previous bike, as long with the same handlebars. And then uh, while, uh, while it was all apart, I, uh, I decided to go with the plus two cartridges, so the forks themselves are two inches longer, and then two inches longer on the fork lowers as well, and those are uh, custom cycle engineering, tie nitrate coated fork lowers to uh, one, for the color, and two, it actually helps a little bit with suspension action. And then, and then to match that, I got the uh, Olin's 13 and a half inch rear shock on this as well. Uh, you can see the preload adjuster hanging out there right above the pipe. Um, and uh, yeah, and this bike handles so much better with really good suspension underneath it. Um, that's probably one of Harley's biggest downfalls. And you know that coming from an Indian, you got all Fox suspension. That stuff is dial out of the box, not a Harley. <laughs> Harley's, get your, get your together. But I thought it was pretty good stock. I mean, it's a... It wasn't... Being a, being a soft tail, mm -hmm. there, there's an advantage in that, in my, yep. in my opinion. Um, and so... I thought that was the first big star. You know, I was a fan of this bike, yep. Bone Stock. Yep. And um, I just, I like, I really like the Mono Shock. That's, I always think it's a really good start. Yep. And uh, other than that, I mean, I don't know if I'm, I think I'm just a punk. I don't ride hard enough. But <laughs> then again, my floorboards over there are grind up, you know, and, and then it's like fun, like every roundabout since Minnesota wants roundabouts hey, everywhere. I like them. I hate them, but, <laughs> but I don't mind them, you know, leaving my mark or taking a little bit with me or whatever I'm doing on them. Yep. Uh, so it's interesting to say, is that something that maybe changed your, maybe this is what, this is my thought. All right. So I think we're going to run this raw. So you're going to have to hear my thought process on this. I think you, I think we liked it. I haven't rode your bike yet, but then once you upgraded it, you realized how much of a difference there was between where it was and where it eventually got, 
Yeah. Sus suspension is one of those things you don't know what you don't know until you know. Right. And coming from my bagger, my road glide that I had, that had Olin's in it as well, I knew the front was too soft. Um, the front, this, it was undersprung and under damped, so it was a little bit springy, and you could, it had a lot of chassis rock when you'd get on the brakes. A little dive. A little bit of dive. Yeah. The rear wasn't terrible. Um, I will say that. However, because I wanted to lift the thing to get my ground clearance for when I lean, because I ran out of lean angle very first day on stock tires, now that I've got cruise techs, I'm still finding that, and I'm almost two and a half inches taller. So, and then I had to play that balance because I got short legs. Um, I didn't want to look like I was trying to ride a dirt bike the whole time either. So, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a good balance between getting what I wanted as far as lean angle, as well as continuing to be able to ride the thing without worrying about tipping over if something should happen, which, I mean, it happens occasionally. Yeah. You know, you get a little sand under your sh under your shoe when you come up to an intersection. It can happen. Yeah. Or uh, like a weird off camp camper. Yep. You know, area where yep. there's a big. You know, you don't notice it because it's an evening ride. All of a sudden, you realize. Oh, I parked in a hole. Yeah, you're in a hole <laughs> or, or freaking gutter or something. Yep. You know, I mean, that's real. That stuff really happens. So. And I'm a big person, I'm a big guy that all, not big guy, I'm a huge guy. No, there, I, I'm a, a guy that says, you know, like, you don't have to be able to flat foot either. No, I'm, you know? I'm literally probably, I'm not reaching for it, but my heels aren't touching the ground. Right. But my point is, is, is when you know 99% of the time, just being able to, you, you want your feet back on the pegs. You, mm -hmm. the, the, when you start putting your feet on the ground is where you start running into issues. Yep. Now that's where ha things happen. The holes are there, and there's yep. gutters and just weird things. Yep. You know, you're you're way too close to where the gravel meets the the asphalt in some bow dunk restaurant yep. that you happen to go find on Google. So anyway, yep. uh, I understand what you're saying. Yep. That's all. Yeah, and then also with lifting suspension, I had to get a, a puck of aluminum that I forget who made it. It might have been uh, Git Lord or something like that. They uh, make a kickstand extender, and even with that thing on it, it still has a bit of a gangster lean to it. So it's, it's uh, you can tell the thing's lifted up when you look at it a little more closely. But then, uh, so then after I got that handled, I started working on the little cosmetic stuff. Um, I'm always a fan of Clockworks windshields. Hands down, um, they're, they understand aerodynamics. And that thing made all the difference in the world versus the stock one. And then obviously my Clockworks phone mount, um, I just got hooked on that this year after seeing it on your bike. And, uh, and then since I don't have a volume switch anymore, I have to rely on my phone to do my volume now because the Rockford Fosgate, the way that is on there, you just Bluetooth in and your phone is the rest of the, the control on it. So, and then uh, so I got- So why don't you have a, it, did, it came with a volume, didn't it? No, nope. That, oh. that Rockford Fosgate for this particular bike is just strictly Bluetooth. It's an amp and speakers Damn. right in it and everything's controlled off of your phone. Okay, okay. You can get Bluetooth controls to add to it. I just- Yeah, you got your phone. I haven't, I haven't gone into that that far. Yeah. That and I haven't seen anything that people, or I haven't seen one that I thought looked as good as just a regular, yeah. It, it they look very second second thought. You know, you know my favorite thing about the Clockworks phone holder is that when you don't have a phone on there, it's not screaming, it "I need my phone." <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can go look at my dad's Goldwing back there. He, he, he's got his set up exactly the way he needs it, and his phone is always there. But when it's sitting there, yeah. I mean, you're you're screaming, you're screaming, "Where's my phone?" Yep. And where's my drink? <laughs> yep. Yep. But uh, you know what? 
he uh, he still puts more miles on than me, so I can't really give him too much crap. So what about mirrors? Is that you're talking about aerodynamics? I know you don't run mirrors. You want to talk about it or what? Well, and that's pretty much why I don't have mirrors. Um, yes, I know I'm an idiot for not having mirrors. You can say it all you want. It is what it is. Um, I actually had a customer of mine give me a set of mirrors, and they're actually sitting right here. Gave me a nice set of mirrors to try, and I just have not went and put them on yet. They're, it says they're Arlen Ness mirrors. They're, they're nice looking mirrors. Um, I just haven't had the chance to put them on yet, and, and yeah, we'll see how they work. I'll give them a shot. But uh, but you did you did remove them because um, you were getting buffeting or something, yep. right? It was ricocheting off the mirror. Yep. The way it comes off the windshield, and the way how low my bars are compared to my fairing, I can't put them below like I did in my road glide, and so they bump into that, and and so I just haven't figured out a solution yet. So, and also. Um, so then we start looking in the cosmetic half of it. I did the Moto Elite Mototech levers and clutch perch. It's an easy pull lever, and then there are shorty levers. Um, and I, going back to the mirror part, I haven't put the mirror adjuster back, the, the mirror mount back on. That covers the adjuster. So, and then I did a Hoffman dash, and I think I did your favorite part, which is the saddlebags. Absolutely. I uh, really noticed these saddlebags right away. I noticed um, I noticed this inlay here. It's just good move. It just it just breaks it up so well. The back end cut for wheelies, not that you know. I don't know if they're actually used for that, but it does have good aesthetics. The lines are good. I'm kind of. I think we've talked about this before, like on my bike, I kind of like straight lines. Mm -hmm. I'm a straight line kind of guy. Uh, I, I used to think I was like a, like a fish hook lines kind of guy, and I went away from that for some reason. So I'm not saying one's right and the other one's wrong, mm -hmm. uh, but the little things like this inlay here it just looks so good. I mean, I really, I like it. And you were telling me you fit a lot more in there than oh, you would I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we went down to buddy, a couple buddies of mine and I went down to uh, a big uh, festival that happens every Memorial Labor Day weekend down in Conesville, Iowa. And I got my tent, my sleeping bag, um, some extra clothes, and I even stopped and picked up a six pack. Hey, you got to have them when you go camping. <laughs> got to have them when you go camping. And uh, I even stopped and picked up a, a six pack of. Uh, came and jack on the way down and and everything fit great and I don't have a, a sissy bar or anything for this yet um, otherwise I would have carried my cooler down but uh, other than that I had everything I needed with some extra clothes and I was I slept on the ground obviously as comfortable as you can be on the ground <laughs> but uh, but yeah so it's uh, definitely easier to pack those than those clamshells that came on it and they're the same length yeah, it's oh, not from, the same yeah on, from behind. So when you look at it, it's not uh, oh, yeah, true, from true. behind. So here's so one thing we haven't talked about, and we we uh, because you do have a dyno. When I say we have a dyno, like look at this one, two, three, four, five. If you guys have never seen my channel before, um, arc tuning literally is a tuner. This is what he does, and it is five steps away from his middle garage, because that one is set up for the dinos. But um, we haven't talked about it. Can you remember, you know, obviously it's a 117. I think most people know that. If you don't, in 2023, they started putting 117s, right? They the did the ST. So originally the 117 came out in, I wanna say 2019 with the CVOs. Okay. And so, 21 or 20, 21, and 22, um, they had, or in 2022, they started putting this, the 117 and the Lowrider S, and that's when the ST came out. Okay. 
and then so that was the first departure and some people were extremely upset about it because it's not it's a cvo part now that's in a regular bike whatever so, so what what bone stock did you have and what are you running now or around about now okay so bone stock and i can i can i can print all the graphs off for you to post and okay. um stock was i want to say 116 torque and 93 horsepower so at that point i started doing one change at a time i started with putting the exhaust on I, that bassani superbike pipe that i had on there it picked up then I put the air cleaner on, picked up, and this is without actually tuning it. I'm monitoring AFRs the entire time to make sure everything's safe, and wide open it was fine, and I rode it for like 300 miles on a stock tune with that Bassani two into one, and, and I never threw a check engine light or anything like that, so I'm not advocating for people to go do that because they can get really sensitive. But, and then I also, also tested just the air cleaner. They call uh, SNS calls that the stinger lid, and I tested that, and that picked up another like one or two horsepower, and that was just on a bone stock tune with an exhaust, air cleaner, and everything. And I can I can send the graphs and all that type of stuff. So, so then at that point is when I started swapping the cams out, and so right now the best it's made, um, obviously. But hang on real quick. Did you ever tune it for that setup with the stock cam? No. No. Nope. Okay. I did not. That's because the, the AFRs were okay they, enough that it, you it, weren't screaming, right? No, it wasn't it wasn't anything for me to be overly concerned about. Um, is it ideal? No. You could have squeezed more out I, of it. I probably could have squeezed more out okay. of it. But I had it was November. And uh, I also work construction during the day. This is tuning is is my second. My second is more my hobby job. And Your hobby full time. My hobby full, full time. time at, overtime at, job. Full, full, overtime. <laughs> yep. So I, I put in I put in ten hours a day doing construction. I come out. I put go home, put the kids to bed, and come back out and tune until eleven eleven thirty at night. So, um, so I was kind of limited on time so i just said screw it and i started throwing cams in it and the best that it ever made was uh in its current form was 135 torque and 129 horsepower in a bike that is otherwise stock um i don't the only reason i'm gonna remove the valve covers on this bike is so i can get rid of the wrinkle finish um, I'm gonna put gloss on it. Mm. I'm not a fan of the of the wrinkle finish, but but it's just with time. I got a customer who uh, does a lot of uh, a lot of brings me a lot of bikes, and he's got a, a full set of everything that's um, that's that is wrinkle finished on. He's got uh, gloss black for me, and just haven't done it yet. But uh, and then I also got to get rid of the chrome tappet covers. <laughs> but other than that. The motor, I do not plan on taking apart. Okay. Um, so it is a stock 117. It's got a set of good lifters in it. Um, I'm gonna, when I take the valve covers off, I'm gonna put non-adjustable push rods in it, uh, just for some more valve train stability. And then after that, I don't plan on cracking this motor open. It Right now with it being lifted up and changing the center of gravity, this thing just does not want to keep the front end on the ground. Yeah. And and even if I if I launch from a stop sign too hard, um, being my my motocross background, um, it just wants to carry the front wheel. So that's it could be faster on a drag strip if I lowered it, but I'm more worried about corners. Yeah. And so that's why I'd end up getting cruise techs, got rid of the the stock tires. They were they weren't terrible, but uh but again, I love the cruise techs. The cruise techs are such a good tire. Um, so we were, that's what I run on mine. You well, know we've talked about this before. <laughs> yeah. Indian did did a lot of right things. They by, they put good tires on the thing along with good suspension. So and that rear tire is a, a little bit heavier than the than the uh, Michelin that came on it. It's got a lot more tread, uh, stickier rubber, and so the tire itself is a little bit heavier. So at the Faribault Dino Day shootout, it made 128 torque and 100 and 
23 horsepower, but they're also pulling it in fifth gear rather than where I do, I do six gear, which is a direct drive one to one on these things. Okay. It's not an overdrive. Six? No. Oh. Okay. No, that's the other thing too. Um, they uh, they run they gear, they switched to a six speed, didn't change the ratio in first gear, still made six gear one to one, but then upped all of the gearing to lower the RPM at uh, at cruising at cruising speed on the interstate. Except for six gear. Six gears one to one, but right. because they changed the the primary ratios on the on the belt drive, right. they made it a taller gearing, or I should say shorter gearing because taller. Yeah, they're wedging them all in there. Well, what before one to one? The, yeah, they made the the spacing narrower, so that when they threw essentially a bigger front sprocket on it or a smaller rear sprocket to get your gear ratio, your your final gear ratio a little bit lower in the number. So like going, I wanna say this is like a, a 3.6 area. Don't quote me, It's I think that's what it is uh, between the front sprocket and the rear sprocket on the pulley. Um, they went to like a, they went from like a 3.8 down to this like 3.2 or whatever it was. I can't remember exactly what uh, it is. And, and I'm um, not a Harley loyalist, um, yes, 98% of the bikes I tune are, are Harleys. Um, it just happens to be the mark that I'm in, but I Most don't- Most of them that you own have always been Harleys. Honestly, I've only owned two Harleys. I owned a, I owned a Victory before this. <laughs> so- hey, Don't get me started on it, Victory. <laughs> hey, I was, that's- I'm a positive, I, by the I, way, I'm not saying nothing negative. No, I, I love the, I love the bike. Yeah, yeah. I love the bike. The problem was, I there was no aftermarket support, yeah. and then it was right at the time when Polaris shut it down. Yep. And on, and I'm a Polaris guy too, and it really was a kick in the nuts. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate, <laughs> but also, I, I under I do understand that it bled into that Challenger that's out there, or your yeah. your um. I'm drawing a blank. Pursuit. Pursuit. Yeah, or Power Plus, even like the motor. Yeah, the like, Power yeah. Plus. No, I, I get it all blend into that. It just at the time it it felt like we were we were stranded. That's so, all. So we're doing this like podcast style. So we're just we can yeah bump around off ideas. And yes, you probably tuned into this because you wanted to know about what a one year owner is. And we'll and I'll ask him a couple of those questions in just a okay. second. Um, but we're going to do podcast off. So I'm just going to say one thing. Mm -hmm. I get it as a business standpoint. Polaris acquires Indian motorcycle rights yep. in like 20, 2013, tw I think 11 and or... then 13. They rolled out the first, okay. the first model by 2016. They were out selling victory motorcycles Cycles. and they were working out of the same, the is same there, plant yep. and uh, the, everything's making being made and assembled side by side. Yep. At some point, just trajectory yep. of growth, something had to go. And then, of course, because I know a bunch of dealers and owners and stuff, I've gotten other information that's kind of interesting that we can maybe save for another talk. Okay. But uh, but just that one insight, you know, I mean, everybody loved victories. Not everybody yep. was buying enough of them. That's no, all, you and, know? and when I rode your bike, it reminded me a lot of my victory. Yeah, because the the way the 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 rider triangle is very similar. Yeah, very similar, and and it handled good. Even even I had a I had a sixteen Magnum with the twenty one inch front wheel. That thing with a twenty one inch wheel still handled pretty good. Yeah, well, you know that's the, the victory I had was a Magnum. You know, I had a, just a, a seventeen Magnum. Mm -hmm. So I know exactly what you're talking about. But regardless. You're not a Harley loyalist, no. is that what you're saying? No, if anything, I I continue to beat my head against the wall because it feels like they're unfinished when they come off the showroom floor. And that's the most disappointing thing, I guess you could say, is they feel unfinished. And I get that it's so that you can make it your own, but yeah, it just, the the little things like the suspension the right spring rate and all that i get you i get you have to cover everything from 125 pound up to i was i was 270 at this time last year yeah. so i mean i i get it you got to cover those ranges but yeah 
And there's guys way bigger than 270. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, but <laughs> typically, they don't ride soft tails. Yeah, they're yeah, they're yeah, usually yeah. on a touring yeah, bike. That but, is, that is true. but then also, the other thing that came along is my, my dad got that gold wing. And the wife could never get comfortable on the road glide. And then we got that. And now if we want to go ride, we borrow the gold wing. And she's good for an hour or two. And, and she's had enough. And then, and then because I didn't need the road glide to ride two up anymore is the reason I got this. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it fits what I need as a motorcyclist because... Real motorcyclists, in my mind, this is a clarity. This is the way you clear your head. Mm -hmm. You go out ride. Yes, it's freedom to do whatever you want or go wherever you want. It's fun on two wheels. But for, for me specifically, it's that it is what I use to clear my head. And that's what motocross was for me is I could go beat the crap out of myself riding 30-minute motos and, 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 then, and then I don't... I'm, I'm not an asshole at the end of the day. <laughs> so, but, and after I, 2017, I crashed and destroyed my knee a little bit. And, and my buddy Taylor, who's Goldwing you rode this time last year, yep. is the one that got me down this rabbit hole. So I, I owe a lot to where I'm at in this world with close friends. And, and so it's, that's the one thing about motorcycles is they're, it's a way for people to connect and also a way for people to keep their sanity. Mm -hmm. All right, let me see. Um, I agree with that. I often say it, it's the community, motorcyclist community. And I'm actually, and I, I say this all the time, but I'm really big about community. That's reasons why I want to go to Adam's thing and support his, com he's a big community guy. Traveling Tall is a big community guy. There's another friend of mine, Jess from Her Two Wheels does a lot of community stuff. And then here in Minnesota, I mean, you've been to some of my stuff. It's not all Indian people. Nope, nope. Everybody's always welcome at everything I do. And I'm always there. I, I, I think that the community is great. And uh, like you said, just a lot of us do get on these to clear our minds. Yes, it's also a reason to do things or we use it yep. as an excuse. Yep. But in the mint, it's we all get off at the gas station smiling, yep. you know, or in a better spot than we probably were yep. before, before we had started that day. So, and, and, and honestly, one of my favorite things about tuning is I take a motorcycle that someone has been dealing with for two or three years and they think, oh, it's 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 fine. It it runs good enough, and but the, it's got little quirks here and there. It stumbles here, or or it runs hot, and, and you got to stop every once in a while. Where I can fix a, ninety percent of that stuff on the dyno, and they go test ride it and come back, and they're like, this is a totally different bike, mm -hmm. and that is a lot of satisfaction for me. Tuning is seeing. Is, is bringing to light to people how much different and better the ride can be when things are done properly. So is it about having wicked horsepower? For some people, yeah. For me, it's making it run proper. Right. And so that is, that is the biggest satisfaction when I tune is that people notice a difference and it, and it doesn't do the stupid things it used to do. Right. So... Well, I like that. And so I, I will, before we end this, because people did tune in, but by the way, we might, I might start doing this more like almost interviewing slash, I call it a podcast, but it's on video, whatever style, just bullshitting basically. Right. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. Here's my, there's people out there that probably tuned into this to say, I want to buy a Lowrider S or Lowrider ST or that style of motorcycle. Mm -hmm. You've owned it for a year. Yep. Um, maybe not everybody cares about lifting it. Maybe not everybody cares about the performance. We always start falling down these rabbit holes yep. because that's what we do. Um, but, but give some words of advice maybe to somebody that's looking to buy it. Maybe somebody that just bought it, thinking about things to do in their first year of owning it and maybe if there's something to look out for or or no maybe it's all perfect it's up to you i don't know what do you think um so biggest thing on this particular bike uh you got to get the handlebars back a little bit they're just a little too far forward you're kind of reaching for them 
And so it, it kind of it kind of throws a little bit of wrench in your back, and also get rid of that stock seat. Um, on my Rogue Glide, I ran the stock seat for thirty thousand miles, never had an issue. But the um, the factory seat on these STs and S's and all that stuff, it, it's it's a solo seat, and it's not it's not that great. Um, the mid controls, I think, are just fine. Um, uh, other than preference stuff, I don't think there's anything you really need to do to it. But, I mean, if you want to go down the rabbit hole, leave the motor stock. They're, they're not bad. They're not bad for considering the bike. And then get some, get some quality, quality internals for the front suspension. The rear you can pretty much leave stock if you don't have the budget. But other than that, get a set of cartridges for the front end and have a reputable... Um, person install them. I went down another rabbit hole on that. I paid probably $1,500 tuition on that deal. Um, ended up just sending them back to Big Bear. And so that's a whole nother story. We're not going to really get into that, but. So then, okay. So then, so somebody does that, right? They basically mm -hmm. leave a stock and then now they're, I can just hear the people. I want more power. I want more power. Okay. So here's the thing. <laughs> just because there is um, people that have riding styles, mm -hmm. high and low end. What is, out of the four cams, what is uh, maybe something as a tuner would be easy to tune or be maybe a square, a, a, just a good even square power range? Do you, do you have one or do we not even want to go down this rabbit hole? It's so subjective and there's going to be so many opinions out there. Cool, let's How hear them in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not one I tested, but it's one that um, uh, I got great results from. Okay. It's the Alpha 483. I got a customer who had that in a Lowrider S. He put a D&D low cat exhaust on it with the 62 HPI. It made 140 foot pounds of torque on my dyno and 125, 100, just shy of 125 horsepower. He, he was texting me like, think we get 125 out of it? Well, I got 124.8 or something out of it like that. And I said, well, I didn't quite make 125. And he got here and he saw the graph. He goes, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Well, then we went up to Faribault Dino Day and the thing smacked 100 and 143 foot pounds and 127 horsepower in fifth gear. Wow. And I was blown away. And, and so Rich Bennett, you got a hell of a bike right there. So that's a great cam for these bikes. Um, uh, I've, I personally have the Ward uh, 475 in it. Um, it's a great cam. It's one of my favorite cams to tune. Um, one, because I've seen a lot of them. And two, it's, it just tunes so nicely. Um, I've done a few Alpha 485s. Great cam. And don't have any issues with them. And and even the 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 very debated SNS four seventy five for these things. It's a great cam for these bikes. Um, the guys that claim, oh, you get a big old dip up front. Well, you need to find a better tuner. Some of it is exhaust related um, because you have a short exhaust. But I've been working on ways to uh, minimize that dip with short exhaust. But that SNS cam, it's. It was one of the first cams ever put out. I've had great results on it from a 107 all the way up to a 128. Um, same with this Ward 475. Um, that was what was in my road glide at the very end. It made 100 and 151 or 150 torque and 142 horse. And it's a drop in lift cam. It's, it does not require you to go any more of the motor than push rods. So um, I ended up switching to this Fuel Moto Jackpot 2 into 1. Uh, the riot, and um, it's got some secret stuff done to it. But uh, I'm pretty sure this horse, this bike could handle that pipe could handle a lot more horsepower than I'm putting down into it. And it works on a stock bike all the way up to a big bore. Um, I've got a couple customers that we came in and switched them to E85. We made 170 plus horsepower on them in here, and they're 131s. But uh, but they've also, there were, we're finding things out with those too that 
is not the greatest, but again, when you spin a bike to 7,000 yeah. with, a, with a push rod motor, you're gonna find some weaknesses, so. Yeah. Um, how do they find you? Uh, honestly, it's just been word of mouth. Um, an email address? ARK, A-R-K, dyno tuning at gmail.com yeah i appreciate the day um i'm gonna go out and ride this i'll probably try to vlog a little but honestly guys it is it, it, it is really windy it's a blizzard without the snow yeah it's um it's pretty crappy so the riding experience may isn't going to be like the most fun be going down the road like this up the interstate yeah exa exactly <laughs> so but i'm gonna ride it uh maybe i'll try to vlog a little bit of it i'm just not gonna promise too much this really today uh ended up just being just sit around and talk about the harley davidson lowrider st which really overall as a customer you've made it your own and now at this point you're extremely satisfied and happy mm -hmm. um I saw him a year ago. He was pretty satisfied and happy there too. It's funny how ele everything has its own element and the way it evolves. Yeah, the, the evolution of happiness also changes. If somebody was to drop this and make it right back bone to stock, then you would, like you said, you now you know what you didn't know, mm -hmm. and so you'd be maybe frustrated. Yep. But overall, I mean, I really dig this bike. Um, I I dug it when it was stock. We'll have to see. I'm sure. I'm sure I'll like. I'm, listen, you guys. I'm like a college girl. I like everything. I, I, wait, college boy. I'm like. I, I don't even know. Something is. I'm very easy. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I really do. <sighs> I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Anything we missed that you kind of want to talk about? Really. Yeah, I mean, this is, it's just, it's a hell of a build. You've done a good job, and it is. It's, it's still one of those bikes you'd walk right past, though, and not look twice at. It, in my mind, it's one of those, you could park it in a crowd, and it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. It doesn't scream, look at me. But you also went for that. You, you, you didn't want to look at me bike. No, I, you, I like to stay in the background. I like to be, I, I like, I like what I like, and I like to, I like, just like to kind of, blend in so it, it's one of those where it's it's little subtle things that really make a difference performance wise but don't scream look at me look at me yeah i gotta look at me bike everything's stupid i always it's a good looking bike, oh my though. god I, I freaking love my bike anyway and i love your bike there's a lot of people that that uh don't ha don't have the luckiness of having a friend you know, 40 minutes away that has a dyno and has cool bikes and does cool stuff. And, and, um, so we're pretty fortunate. This is a fortunate situation. I think we all both can agree on that. We're both pretty lucky guys in this world. So, Oh, and, and FYI, the rear brake still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Just, you really got to mash the thing on. So uh, yeah, it doesn't bite that hard. It, no, it, and, and truthfully, mm -hmm. I, I use mostly front brake anyway. Yeah. Um, it's it's enough that when you're downshifting, coming into a corner, you can get it to do the supermoto slide a little bit as you're downshifting. But if you're relying on it solely to stop you, man, this try this guy's trying to back it in into. No wonder he loves roundabouts. I'm not backing it in <laughs> into any corner. I'm gonna let you guys know I'm not doing that. But on that note, we're going to end this, and I'm going to end this like I end all my videos. Uh, before I end it, I will make sure to have his email address in the comments if you have questions. If um, you're in the Midwest area somewhere and you want to, you know, potentially have him um, tune your stuff, I would not. If, if I had a Harley or something I needed you to tune and you could tune whatever, I would not second guess it. I wouldn't even hesitate. So I trust this guy. I've rode, I've actually, you know, I've rode many bikes that you have tuned mm -hmm. and I've been around them. They always do run flawlessly. So you guys, I'm lucky. I ride a lot of cool bikes. That yeah, is true. Do. I do get to do ride get a lot, lot of cool uh, in, and uh, that's something I don't want to change. I enjoy it of all different kinds. So, all right, until next time, uh, leave a comment, see what you guys want to see. If there's anything, hit them up in the email, and uh, I'm going to end this like I always do. Ride hard, ride fast, and so somebody you don't know. Peace. <laughs>